Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Beth and today is Wednesday, June the 1st, so we have a lot to talk about. Okay, so today is Wednesday, like I said, and normally that would mean that we would be discussing what are you reading Wednesday, which is the day I talk to you about what I've been reading and you hopefully will go down below and tell me what you're reading. And I hope that you do go down below and tell me what you're reading. But since I'm still reading The Night Gardener, which I should have been finished with a week ago, I'm not really going to spend a lot of time on that subject. To be fair, I've been cleaning a lot in preparation for singing school starting next week. And I lost the book for two days because I was cleaning and put it on a bottom shelf over there with my movies way down at the bottom shelf you can't see and then freaked out for two days because I couldn't find it. So I just got it back yesterday and I am over halfway done with the book. However, it just hasn't been going as quickly as it really should be. So now that I've talked a lot about what I said I wasn't going to talk about, we're going to move along and we're going to talk about the other exciting thing about today that is Stripped Coverlets Hashtag Hot and Sticky Writing Challenge, Summer Writing Challenge, whatever it is, started at midnight. As soon as it flipped over to June 1st, I had my notebook out and I started writing and having been making myself revisit my characters but not write anything about them for the last several weeks, I was able to crank out about three and a half pages. Um, so last night before I went to bed, I wrote front and back one, two, three, to there. So three and a half. And then the bottom of that and the back of that. Today, before I started cleaning, I mean, I've got a three year old and I've been deep cleaning my rooms. So. I feel like I've done a pretty good job. That's most likely more than 488 words. So I'll be typing that up later tonight and hopefully I will have a really good start to that. I am working on Sylvester right now, although like I said in previous videos, I'll be working on many other projects as well. Sylvester 2.0 is going to be my main goal for at least right now. So if you are participating in the hashtag hot and sticky summer writing challenge, please let me know down below if you've made any videos or blog posts discussing it. Feel free to link them down below or let us know that you have done so so we can go and find them. Tell us all about your project. And if you want to be buddies on Twitter and we are not yet, or if you would like to be Voxer friends, chat on Messenger, whatever, let me know. I really enjoy having writing buddies. I can't even speak right now. Really enjoy having writing buddies. And this uh, challenge is bringing booktube and writing all together. And it's really helping me discover some booktube buddies that are also writers. And it is just making my life so happy. I love discussing books and discussing writing. And when I get to do so, it just makes my little heart pitter-patter with happiness. I almost forgot to tell you, I created an Excel sheet that has all of the days for the four months listed in one column and then an empty column, but with an additive formula at the bottom so that every day you put in how many words you wrote for the day and it will add it up for you as you're going along. And then the third column has how many words per day you should have. So, you know, day one, blank, 488, and then you type however many words you got that day, and it goes down to the bottom, and it'll have how many you put in, and then June 2nd, how many you type, whatever. You get the drift. Um, it was really simple to make. It was just time consuming. I think it took me about 45 minutes to finish because I had to type out all of the dates and I did the math for how many words per day and all that. 
But if you want one and you don't want to make it yourself, if you will email me, I can email it back to you or just leave me a message down below. Send me a quick Twitter shout or something. Let me know you want one and I'll get with you and send that your way. Just a little bit easier to keep track of things. If nobody wants one, that's cool. But I thought I would put it out there. So if you want it, let me know and I will send you a blank copy. And now on to something exactly the same, but a little bit different. While I've been cleaning in preparation for singing school, I came across a lot of boxes and tubs that I had shoved into every conceivable hidden place in these rooms. Um, things that were filled with paraphernalia from my classroom that I had last year. I taught writing and science to fifth graders. And I only did the one year, but I accrued a lot of stuff. Got a lot of got a lot of stuff. And I gave a lot of stuff away and I threw a lot of stuff away and I'm giving more stuff away. But I shoved it all into corners because I didn't want to see it, but I didn't want to get rid of it. And um, yeah, so it just sat there for the last year. And in fact, last year, my last day of school that I brought the final things home and shoved them into various places was June the 1st. So it's literally been one year since I put this away. And I found today a bag that had a treasury of critical thinking activities. One for the books, creative ways to encourage better book reports. This Ninja Turtles deal with a weekly center checklist and things like that, which is actually my mom's. She retired and I did not go back to that school. Then we have journaling templates that actually have not just the templates for papers for the kids, but a few little places here and there where I have uh, shoved in different prompts and things to go with them. And then Getting to the Core of Writing by Richard Gentry, Jan McNeil, and Vicki Wallace Nessler. Essential Lessons for Every Fifth Grade Student. My dad bought this for me as soon as I was hired. And so it talks about a lot of really neat, basic things that even us as writers need to go back and revisit every once in a while. And the thing that caught my eye on the flip through today was a discussion on sentence structure and how even great novelists need to remember to vary their sentence structure, long, short, compound, et cetera, et cetera. If you have all sentences, the same exact length, the same syllabic nature, et cetera, readers will stop reading, they will get bored. And I thought that was very interesting. And so I wanted to, relay that to you guys, and I didn't mean to blather on about the books, but I did, so there you go. And then I also found my writing portfolio. Every student in the fifth grade, all 85 of them, got a three ring binder, and we set up a writing portfolio, and so it was a little bittersweet to find mine and think about all the things I could have done better or worse with it. But if you guys would like me to go through the portfolio in more depth later on, I would be more than happy to. This is a really good thing to use, even if you're not in the classroom, to set up something like this just for your own writing it can be pretty handy. But anyway, I am going to leave you guys with three prompts that I had shoved into the writing journal that might help you as you are working on the hashtag hot and sticky summer writing challenge. If you are not doing the writing challenge, then I really encourage you to do so. It is only 488 words per day for four months. It gets you into that whole writing pace. It gets you going so that you are in the habit of sitting down and writing for 15, 20 minutes a day every day that you can. You sit down, you write, and you have something come out. And if you only want to do it as journaling and you don't really want to write a story, but you want to get in the habit of journaling or writing down your day or writing letters to people and, you know, reviving that, keeping in contact with your old friends and family, it's a really great way to do it. 
And even if you don't fancy yourself a writer, this can get you into it. Everybody has creative ideas sometimes. You can't tell me that you never had an idea, that you never see inspiration in anything. You may want to write down old recipes. I'm not you. I don't know. But it would be great for you to join us. I really encourage you to. And here are three prompts for anyone who wants to use them. I used them with fifth graders and they were able to come up with some pretty hilarious stories. So I bet you guys can too. This one says, draw your head, then fill it up with words and pictures showing what's going on in there. So that might be a good, uh, a good way to start a story or a good illustration for a story. Describe a day in class from the teacher's point of view. You can use from the boss's point of view, from the bus driver's point of view, whatever, somebody in your life. If you are a parent from your toddler's point of view or your teenager's point of view, or describe a day in the life from a different character's point of view, from Adrian and Dalton's point of view, whatever. And then this one says you wake up one day to discover that your greatest weakness is now a superpower. Who are you? That's one of my favorites. And the kids got really philosophical with that one, actually. I was expecting some really funny, just, you know, my big toes weak, and so I'm now big toe man. And it wasn't. It was like, my greatest weakness is math, and now I can't do math man, and I have to figure out how to, you know, go up and down the streets because I don't know how to use a compass because that's part of math. So lots of interesting ideas for you there. And I am now done with the babbling and <laughs> I'll be back with you guys sometime soon. Like I said, please leave me your comments down below. I look forward to hearing from you. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up or two if you like the video. Subscribe if you're new. And I will hopefully see everybody again soon. Bye.